Hey, Instagram. Ah, I'm hitting the desk. Hey, Facebook. Okay, we are gonna do an eyeshadow tutorial today, sort of like an everyday easy eyeshadow tutorial. And I'm gonna use two new palettes. You guys saw on Instagram, if you follow me there, that I used this new cool palette by Arbonne last week, posted a picture. And you can see I'm using a lot of the smoky shades, the blue, the black, um, and this pebble here and the slate. I love all of these colors. So if you are a cool complexion, you have a dark skin tone or a high contrast between your hair, eye, and skin tone, these would be great colors for you. And don't be afraid by these. You know, I use a lot of the smoke, um, a lot of the blue, and a lot of the black, and it turns out beautiful, and it doesn't have to be a smoky eye. Now, one thing about palettes, a lot of times when I get a new palette, I realize very quickly that even though I love the colors, they lack a crease color, which is your first color that you start with so that you create that fade or that ombre blended look. And the nice thing about this palette is it does have a couple of light transition colors. So I've been using either Pebble or I think this is Goad. It's a light purple color. So those are a great color to start up high, work towards the darker colors. So this is a cool palette, but today we're gonna use a warm palette just because I just got it and I wanna try it out. This is what the warm palette looks like. Show Facebook, show Instagram. And these palettes, just so you know, are regularly 56. If you are a preferred customer with me, they're 4480. So the nice thing about these is they're great to travel with. I have, of course, you know, a ton of different palettes, but many, many times they're very large and hard to travel with. So these are nice and small, compact. You have all your colors in one small palette. The other thing is they do have a mirror, which I love. I love everything to always have a mirror. So first thing we're gonna do is prime the eyelid. Now I went ahead and primed one eyelid so that you guys could see the difference. Even if I'm not doing a complicated eyeshadow look or I just wanna get out the door really, really fast, I still always prime my eyelid. Even if it's just, like I said, one color, do my face, do my mascara, out the door. So I primed this eye so you can see the difference. I do prime my eyelids with a water-based concealer. Can you see? So this eye is primed. This eye is my natural, the, the pigment and the color that I naturally have in my eyelid, which is pretty dark. So I like to mute that out. I don't wanna see any broken capillaries, dark spots, red spots, freckling, nothing. And that's why I prefer to use a concealer instead of an eyeshadow control cream because sometimes they can be a little bit sheer. So we're gonna use Shape Tape today because that's what's in front of me. I'm gonna use a really small concealer brush to prime my eyelid. You can also use a beauty blender if you wanna do it that way, that's totally fine. I start by looking down. Now that's a big tip that I try to get everybody in the habit of doing is looking down while they do their eyeshadow that, so that you can see your entire eyelid. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out my brow just in case you got outside the lines or it's not as perfect as you want it to look or maybe you just wanna give yourself a little bit more of an arch. I use the small concealer brush and you can see where I started right here, just kind of carving out the brow, giving it a, just a little bit more precise shape. And you definitely need a nice tight brush to do this. And then I'll get kind of close so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So you see that I've just kind of lightened now, when you see a highlighting and contouring guide and it talks about how to highlight the brow bone, I tend to highlight my brow bone with the concealer. Sorry, I'm showing the Instagram people here. So I've already carved out the eyebrow. Now I'm gonna grab just a little bit more and I just dispense it on the back of my hand. So I've got concealer on the back of my hand. I'm gonna look down and I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the eye by painting the entire eyelid with my concealer. And I wouldn't leave it this way because if you were to put eyeshadow right on top of this, if you're doing that currently, that's totally fine, but I feel like it's gonna look patchy because the eyeshadow will stick to certain parts of the eye better than others and it won't look as blended. So we're gonna go over this with a powder. And like I said, girls, you can use a beauty blender to do this step. But for me, especially over 40, girls, I feel like it's important to prime the eyelid, especially even if you're not gonna wear eyeshadow because it makes you look more awake, it makes your skin look more flawless, everything matches and lines up, and I just look more alert now. So I prime the eyelid. I use sort of a very um, packing style big brush like this. 
I will answer that. I'm reading some questions. I will answer that in just a second. That's a good question. Hey girls. Okay, today I'm using the translucent mattifying um, powder right here. This one's by Arbonne. I like it because it's in a compact form. I love loose and I do have some recommendations for loose, but I really like compact form too because they are less messy. And what I do is I just pack it on. Pack, 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 tap, tap, tap. Um, over the whole eyelid to make sure that I'm ready to receive eyeshadow. So both eyelids are primed now. Now the main principle that I like to um, use when doing eyeshadow is that I start with my really big puffy brushes and then we're slowly going to move to our smaller brushes. I'm missing one brush. Let me grab it here. Let's wipe the concealer off. I have my little makeup towel. So we're gonna start big and we're gonna work small. So I'm starting with the M441. If you are watching on Facebook, I put every brush that I use today and all of the eyeshadow palettes in the description. Then we're gonna move to the M430, um, which is more of a pointed blender, and then you could go even smaller into the MAC 217. You can go, and then you, the MAC 239, and then this is the Morphe 431. So we're, you can see that we move slower. What most women do is try to pack a dark color on their eyelid and then attempt to buff it out and make it look blended, and it never works. So what you wanna do is start with your lighter colors high up on the eye around the, um, the crease in the hood, and then work to your smaller brushes in your darker colors as you move down on the eye. So if there's nothing you take from this, but this principle, it will help you tremendously. Start high with big brushes, work low with small brushes and darker colors. So we're gonna start big, we're going to start light, and we're gonna start high. And we're gonna move slowly onto the eyelid, working to smaller brushes and darker colors. Cool, everybody's got that. Shoot me some emojis, you're paying attention, all right. So we're gonna start with the M441. Some people, I cannot start this big because they don't have big enough eyelids. If they don't have big enough eyelids, I always start with the MAC 217 because it's just a little bit smaller, but I have nice big eyelids, so I'm gonna start with a really big brush. And I'm gonna start with the color Caraway. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's a very matte, light color. And I always start matte because I'm working pretty high up on the eye and I don't want that to be too shimmery. So I just put a little bit on my brush on the end just a little bit. And if it's too powdery, because this does come off really easy, I just kind of shake it off. Look down at your mirror. So that'll be a habit change for a lot of people. Look down at your mirror so that you can see your entire eyelid. You're always gonna start, I'm gonna turn so the Instagrammers can see me. You're always gonna start on the outside of the eye in these little circular motions. And I have very little control over my brush because I'm holding it at the end. And for those of you who've been watching me for a long time, you know that this motion is called swish, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper. Swish, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper, swish, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper, right? We're just lightly going back and forth and you can see that color building. So you see the difference between one side and the other? Now, on my really busy day, girls, those of you who don't have a lot of time to do eyeshadow, I would just do this one color and go. Just, that's it. Don't pack a light, a dark color on your eyelid and try to blend it out and go. Use the higher up color up here. Do your swish, 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 windshield, windshield, windshield wiper, windshield wiper. Do your face, do your mascara, and get out the door. Got it? Do the other side. Now, there are a couple colors in here that we could use as our first color, which is great. You've got a couple options for your transition. You could use sand or caraway. I'll show you what sand looks like in a sec. And you can always add to keep building. Always start at the outside and work in. Swish, swish, swish. Windshield wiper, windshield wiper. And you can sort of be haphazard about it because it's so light, it doesn't matter, right? If you mess it up a little bit and it's buffed out. Now with this first brush, just wanna make sure you're clear on this. I am in the crease and on the hood slightly. So I'm pretty high up. A lot of people don't come high enough, so you're up high. The other color we could have used here is sand. This is sand, this is caraway, so we could have used sand, and that's fine. The next color we're gonna use is clove. You can see it's just a step darker, so that same principle applies. We've started light, we're going dark. 
I'm gonna pick up my pointed blender. This is the M330. And we're gonna work a little bit darker. But I'm gonna be in the same area, so we're gonna start in the same spot. But this time, I'm actually right in the crease. So I'm not in the crease and on the hood, I am right on the crease this time. Swish, 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 windshield wiper, windshield wiper. Swish, swish, swish. Now, the reason I love these pointed blenders is because that little point is meant to hug the crease. And the crease is right where, when you close your eyes, your eye creases. So we're right in the crease and we're just building that color. I'm gonna dip back into clove, other side, looking down slightly, right in the crease this time with a slightly darker color. Pretty. Now you could stop at this point, because really any time you could just stop, do your eyeshadow and go. Many times what I'll do, and I'll just show you a trick, is I'll pick up my 239, I'll use that clove again, the second color, and I'll look down and pack it on the outside of the eye. Man, y'all, the payoff on these colors is unreal. Like you put it down and there it is. Now generally I would have started with my eyes first and then moved to my face, but for sake of time in the video, we're, I did my face and then I'm doing my eyes on camera. Just brushing any fall off. So I brushed that second color and I just tapped it onto the outer corners. Now we call these our outer V's, or outer triangles, and I went ahead and filled it in right here. Now you would not have been able to see that area of your eye if you weren't looking down. So I just tapped it on. Now if this were a quick and easy, I wanna get out the door really fast look, I would take my 239 and I'll dip into my lighter color, which is fog, is what I'm gonna use today. And I'm gonna look down, and this time I'm gonna start on the inside of the eye, and I'm gonna tap down fog on the inner eye. Now, you might be asking, where do I stop? You know, where does the dark stop and the light begin and all of that? Well, typically that darker color I take about a third of the way over, and then the lighter color, I bring two thirds of the way to meet them. And what I do is I cross over the dark with the light slightly so that they sort of look like they're melted together and, and blended, and it doesn't look like you can see a stop and a start point. So for a quick and easy out the door eyeshadow look, I will pop this light color on the inner eye take it two thirds of the way over and be done with it. But since you're on the tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple more colors. But I wanted to give you some options for those of you who know, I'm not gonna do a whole lot, Lisa, this is not gonna happen, then you've got an option. And I never really bring the light color too far over because I don't wanna cover up what I put out here, that darker color. I want it to look like what you guys just mentioned. Somebody said, well, how do you get brides to have that light to dark look, that gradient when you see it on camera? And it's because I've put the light color in here and I've stopped at two thirds and not allowed it to go over the darker color. But we're gonna um, add some darker just for funsies. I'm gonna pick up mahogany right here. It's like a reddish brown. I'm gonna use the same brush, the 239. Now, I have been cleaning my brush in between colors. This is called a color switch. You've heard me talk about it before. It's by Vera Mona. You can get these on Amazon. I just rub my brush down into it and it cleans off all the pigment in between colors so that you don't accidentally go into the, the palette and pick up something that was old from yesterday. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of mahogany. And with this darker color, you could do a couple different things. You could use your pointed blender and actually deepen the crease, which I want a kind of intense look, so that's what I'm gonna do. Or you could use your small packing brush and just put a little bit on the outside. I think I'm gonna go ahead and build up my crease a little bit. Like I said, I really want this to pop. So I'm going to go ahead in with that reddish brown into my crease, and I'm keeping it really contained meaning I'm not like so haphazard like I was with the first color. Gosh, there's some pretty ones. 
Y'all don't be afraid of color. There's a green in here and it's called forest. But I'll tell you what, if you have brown eyes, those greens and blues, oh, they're so beautiful. So just play with it and go there because a lot of times it's just where you're putting the color. Um, I just picked up a little bit more mahogany and I'm brushing it right into my crease. How are we doing? All right. Now I'm gonna pick up the 239 and I'm gonna go into an even darker color. And that is Cypress, which is this dark, dark brown here. And when I wanna pack color on and I really want it to show up, I always use this 239 because it's a shader brush, so it's meant to be tapped on the eyelid. Anytime I'm on the eyelid, I'm always tapping. I'm never swishing. I don't want it to be diffused. I don't want it to be super blended out. When you want it to really show up, you tap, tap, tap. So I'm gonna look down. I always start at the lash line and I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap the color on. Holy crap, these are so pigmented, it's awesome. Can you guys see it going on on um, Facebook? So that's the dark, deep brown. Same thing over here. Now somebody asked, how do you get the eyelids so shimmery? when um, use, when I see your bridal colors. So I'm gonna answer that real quick. Tapping that darkest color on, the outer V. If you feel like, oh, I see too much of a line, like I can see where it stops and starts, just pick up your either empty 217 or your empty blending brush, clean it off, and just go into the crease to just blend it out a little bit. I'm gonna wipe off the excess. For the really shimmery eyelid, if you like shimmery eyelids, I typically use a loose pigment. I don't think I have any in my personal box. I carry a ton of loose pigment in my kit and what you, or the other thing you can do is use a highlighting powder. So I'm gonna use a highlighting powder. This just came out and I just got it, so why, why not? This is the highlighting Highlight Glow Palette from Arbonne. And I'm gonna pick up the really shimmery color called Stardust, and I'm going to put it on the inside of the eye. Ooh, that's pretty. To kind of create that shimmery pop. But um, loose pigment, uh, especially the shimmery kind girls, um, really shows up nicely. And I end up using that a lot. Loose pigment basically is crushed eyeshadow for those of you who don't know what that means. Now for the under eye. We're gonna use the same brush. What I'm gonna do, I'll answer that question too. We're gonna start with clove, which is sort of a median tone color. And I'm just gonna use this 239 to buff it out underneath the eye. So at this point, you can look straight ahead and I'll show you the difference between one and the other. No, I do not use eyeliner on my under eye. That's clove, just on one side. Now we're gonna put it on the other. Now you can buff it out even more if you want to and just really make it smoky. But here's a principle just I want you to absorb. The same concept that we used on the top where we started light and worked dark, I usually use the same on the bottom. So I start light, work dark on the bottom. The lighter color, you can kind of really bring down, smoke it out more. And then the darker colors, you'll have more control just like you did on the top. So that's clove on the bottom. Pretty. And then I'm gonna pick up a different brush. So let's use our pencil brush. And this is a Morphe 431. It's a tiny little pencil brush. And I use this a lot to line. So I'm gonna pick up the Cypress, which is that really deep dark brown. And I'm gonna go back in, but this time I'm gonna stay a little more tight to the lash line. And I'll typically, with the darker color, maybe not come in as far. So with the lighter color, I came in all the way but this darker color, I'm gonna keep about, I would say a third of the way in. Good. Now, if you wanted to intensify the look, you could go inside the waterline with your liner down here, 
or on the top. I'm not much of a liner girl for every day. So I'm gonna leave it like it is because I really want the color of the eyeshadow and the color of my eyes to pop. I'm gonna pop a little bit more mascara on. And let me tell you how to get the palettes, girls, because some of you have messaged me privately even about the palette and the picture I posted the other day. If you go to my website at shopimagebylisa.com, you can register as a preferred customer. It's $30 a year and you get 20% off all individual products and 40% off sets, the big value packages. So when you place a $150 order, retail order, you get free shipping as well. So that's a great way to get these palettes. Um, and I'm donating again, still half of all my retail profits from the month until next, this coming Saturday to the Walk for Life in Tallahassee Women's Pregnancy Center. And I've raised a thousand dollars so far. So thank you guys. And then if this helped you, if this eyeshadow palette and this tutorial helped you share, I haven't done a giveaway in gosh, probably a month or so. So I thought what I'll do is I'm going to give away one of these palettes from everybody who shares. We'll pick one winner next Monday. You have one week. Again, it's regularly 56, but as a preferred customer, it's 4480. So you can do the warm or you can do the cool. I'll show you what the cool looks like again. Looks like that. And you can tell I've been using this one a lot. This is called Opal. I have that as a single, which is a great way to shop if you ever, if you are really, really basic in your eyeshadow routine and you know I'm not gonna use all those colors, that intimidates me. You can always get singles, which one of the things I love about Arbonne is they sell their individual palettes and then you just pop the colors in, they're all magnetic. And then when you run out, you just pop it out and replace just the color that you use all the time, which is great for travel. So if you know, I'm only gonna use two shades, never gonna use more than that, or I'm gonna use four shades and never more than that. These little palettes are just magic. And then you just buy the little singles. Let me show you how it works. Here's one of the little singles and this is called um, Clove. So this is Clove. We actually used Clove today. Um, it's in one of the palettes. You just pop it right in and it snaps into place and now it's in there and then it has a little mirror so it's not cute all right so I linked all of the in, um, brushes and the palettes in the description if you have questions that I didn't answer just um, pop them in the comments and then don't forget to share because I'm gonna have a winner and I'll do Instagrammers too but you guys have to pop on to Facebook to be able to share it all right guys I'll see you next Monday on makeup tip Monday bye Instagram bye Facebook